Joining us, Marcus Lemonis. Good morning, Marcus. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Look, man, you, I, uh, I, I went to the site yesterday. I watched The Prophet. It was riveting. I couldn't turn that off. I just wanted to see a couple seconds of it. I had to watch the whole thing. Well, I'm glad you guys like it. I don't know if the uh, management told you that, but you guys are one of the episodes in season two. Your, your station is one of the episodes. Okay, come on down. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him in. Perfect. <laughs> I was I was about to ask you, uh, how do we get it done? Now, now I want to explain yeah. to everybody who you are and, and, and what the profit is. So, well, I'll let you do that, I guess. Uh, no, it, I, I, want to, I want to hear your rendition. Like, my rendition, and it, here's a guy, here's a guy who, who started off, uh, worked his ass off and, and built up the, uh, well, I guess, camping world, right? That was your well, big deal, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, you've seen him on, uh, on on The Apprentice. And then what I the show I watched yesterday, he goes in, and it, this is the prophet. He went into this place that was called uh, Car, what was it, Car Cash? Or, yeah. Uh, okay, goes in there, takes a place that's been around since 1977. These two brothers, he goes in, square. the father started the business. He goes in, changes the entire place. And, and, and while I'm watching this show, I'm going, all right, let me see how good this guy really is. So I go to carcash.com, and between the time he got there till now, how many different locations do we have around the country? 70 now. Dude, this guy Holy is a cow. You are a visionary. He's a family friend of Lee Iacocca. Okay. I mean, car mobile. But I mean, but, but, but I mean, you're talking about a vision. I didn't get it when you said it, just like the brothers did. I didn't, didn't see get the, this hole in the wall place making it. It was amazing. Well, guys, you know what? One of the interesting things that, that we're finding, and, you know, we ended up doing a, a six episodes this year, and one of the things that we're finding is that that small businesses, you know, as you guys know, are really the backbone of this country, and it, it employs over 90% of the entire workforce. And, you know, mm-hmm. in some people that may sound like a soundbite or some sort of scripted statement, but, but look, the reality of it is is that, you know, every business in America today that's big started as a small business. And when the economy went on the skids in 2008 and 2009, I, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I was scared for my life. Uh, and, and so was everybody else. And when we saw the unemployment number explode, you know, a lot of that was small businesses closing and, and they close at a very fast pace. And, you know, we, lots of news programs, lots of television stations, lots of newspapers dedicated to, you know, what's happening at J.C. Penney or what's happening at Best Buy or whatever, and not enough attention is being paid to what's happening to everyday people that work in a small business or own a small business, and that, that's really the, the, the premise of the show. How did you come up to, you know what I'm saying, how did you know that you had this in you, uh, this ability to do what you do? You know, I always liked being an entrepreneur. I, I always laugh about it. When I was 12, uh, and no, no joking aside, I started a little lawn business, and I had 10 kids working for me and, and, and was making money then. And then when I was 13 or 14, I started a, I, would, I call myself a candy dealer. I used to buy candy at the 7-Eleven and resell it at school. And what I liked about it was that, that the art of the deal and the art of kind of watching the money turn. I'm, I'm not as focused on just making money as people think I am, but I am focused on the deal and the, 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 the fun of it and the excitement. And, well, you know, it's a little bit like a rush, to be honest. Well, I think when you, you had said in, in the show, you had talked about the fact that it's the three Ps, the people, the process, and the product. So it sounds to me right. like the, the, the process to you is, 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 I know all three elements are key, but the process to you seems like the big one. You know, actually, uh, it doesn't. The, the, the biggest one for me is the people side of things. And, you know, you can find a business, any business that's got good process and good product. And if they have crappy people, you know, it's, it's just crappy people. And the opposite is the case. If, if you have great people, uh, you know, like at your station, you guys have great people, you can afford to have a slip in your process or an average product, and people will make up the difference. They'll make up the gap. You think about it in sports, it's the same way. And, and one of the things that's different about this show, people have compared it to other shows that are out there, is that I write a check for $2 million over the season of my own money, not, not NBC's money, not somebody else's money. It's my own money. And, and you know, for me, to, when you want to get people to listen, you have to put money on the table. You have to get them to pay attention. And people have asked if the show is scripted, and you guys 
probably have not seen episode two, which is what aired last week. But no. in episode two, I lost $150,000 in the blink of an eye. I was about to say, you can't make money on all these. Okay, that, that I will watch episode two. Uh, I, I could, yeah, episode yeah. two is, is uh, really, really different. It's a big twist. What I, I don't want to give it away, but I mean, it's already aired, so you, you can kind of say, right? Yeah. W- what happened? What was that? So, so what happens is I go into a high-end uh, flower and gift shop in Pasadena, California. Uh, I, I bust my fanny for, you know, over two weeks, and I spend about $150,000. And in the end, uh, the son of the owner, the owner passed away, and I, you know, some people will call him a mama's boy. I don't know if that's necessarily accurate. But uh, he, at the end of the show, he tells me within, you know, four minutes to go on the show, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing the deal. Why not? Well, you didn't do anything here. Uh, well, everybody else saw me do something, and we had a handshake deal. So it's it's a little bit about the power of the handshake in today's business world. And you know, I think in this country we've gotten way too focused on everything's got to be a legal document. It does, but when you shake somebody's hand, it's got to mean something. And in this episode, you'll find out that to some people it doesn't mean anything anymore. I, you know what? If it wasn't one thirty in the morning when I watched the other episode, I would have watched episode two as well, and I will watch it. I am definitely going to watch it. I, I'm way in. So, so uh, epis- now it's on, uh, what, CNBC, right? The yep. live shows. And tonight, mm-hmm. yeah, tonight is episode three. Okay. It air- airs at 10 o'clock Eastern on CNBC. And, you know, CNBC hasn't typically been known for nighttime programming. It's a new a new thing for them. And, and uh, we were approached by a number of people to do this show. And the reason it made sense for me on CNBC is because it's a real serious channel about serious things not you know I, I like the art of entertainment and believe me the show's plenty entertaining but i wanted it to be on a network that really i thought you know, made a difference and and yeah. i wanted to help kind of help build the nighttime network there uh, it, it it probably will like i said i was riveted captivated i cannot wait to see these other episodes i'm a thanks so Jared. now now how yeah. how do people if somebody wants to get up uh, you know my business needs uh needs to make the profit uh, do they go to the website and click the link and send you information? Yeah, so we're casting for season two right now. They can go on to theprofitcasting.com. Okay. And there's a, there's about a 1,000 applications so far for eight slots next year. So I would encourage people to get wait, on there and make sure they fill it out right. Wait, wait, um, seven, but, well, seven spots. You said we, we're one of them already. Yeah. Well, there's still another station in town that's oh. vying for your spot, but, but it's, it's up in the air. It's, a, Wait, it's there, up in the air yeah, at this point. There are, there are no other stations. Yeah. What do you mean? We are the only We're ones. the only one. Come on now. <laughs> See, guys, if you start thinking you're the only game in town, it's a sign of a problem. Or a sign of a problem. But, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting – it's been a lot of my time. It took us four months to film it, and uh, I wish that there were parts of it that were scripted because the outcomes would have come out, you know, mm-hmm. very differently. And, and as I told you, episode two was a good example. But people should watch it. If you work in a small business – uh, you'll see people that, that you either work for or should work for or shouldn't work for. And if you own a small business, you'll learn a lot about how not to do stuff. And, no, and I think that's the key for me. It was It's awesome. Like I said, all over it. I'm, I, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today, and I, I look forward to watching The Profit. CNBC, it is really, really a great show. It really is, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate okay. it very much.